What's up? What's up, YouTube? Welcome to episode 76 of Hippies and Pancakes. As usual, I got DJ Q Ways with me. What's going on? I got D with me. What's up? What's up? Yeah, so back to what we was talking about. Uh, you know, keeping the country closed and can't keep the country closed any longer with COVID 19 and shit like that. Yeah, the country has to open up. Hey, everybody, they, they, that's why they're forcing the vaccine so they can say we open up because. Like it, it, it can't go on no longer. They can't just give money away and print money. The inflation has already started. You see it in the gas prices. You know what I'm saying? Gas prices are off the hook. Of course, they always go up every summer, but they, it, this around the time they should be coming down. They and should be coming down right now. Yeah, they ain't coming down. It's Labor Day weekend. Yeah, I mean, yeah you're right because like usually right now gas would be about back to like almost like 250 almost right now yeah, it, it would have been sliding down a little like bit like two, two, 270 i mean it's creeping though a little bit like i've been saying gas like 285 it's been it's, it's been over three it's been over three dollars the whole the whole summer for real yeah like especially after that well, gas shortage that we had so right. gas that that gas shortage with the, the, the plot twist the whole time though, because I, I I'm telling you, I'll be outside. You know, we've been outside the whole pandemic working and shit. Oh, so whole time. I, I noticed that once the pandemic kicked off, gas was so cheap, man. When I tell you, yeah, I I feel like I, I traveled right. way more during the pandemic because just everything was like cheap. The roads was open. And like as soon as I'm not gonna blame nobody, but as soon as a certain president takes power, <laughs> not shit start creeping back up. I'm like, I think y'all picked the wrong white guy again. That's how I really felt. I was like, I'm I'm thinking that y'all might have picked the wrong white guy again. Cause the other white guy, he kept the gas prices down and he kept niggas fed. I had a spoke, I had a conversation with a service member, right? Currently serving our country right now. You feel mm -hmm. me? We had a little, you know me, you know, I'm gonna pop my shit about all this shit at any given time, any given fucking Sunday, I'm popping my shit. And I uh I talked to them and we had the, you know, Trump came up and I and he was like, man, nigga said, look, man, I'm gonna say it like this. I was eating the last last four years. I was eating good as shit. I'm like, yeah, he's all eating good as shit. <laughs> I say a lot of people say this them in the last four years. With, I guess because well, we witnessed the biggest wealth exchange in a long time. Yeah, exactly. That, that a lot of niggas, a lot of niggas got a chance to get some bread. I'm not gonna hold you though. Now, as far as my blue collar life, as far as far as my uh, man, as far as my uh blue my blue collar life and me working and shit, I feel like. I feel like I can say that I, I seen, but I can't say how I seen the money to keep it a hundred with you. Like, like I really seen no money because like I didn't get paid more during the pandemic or nothing. I guess I just had more hours or some shit. Yeah. Like, it was just more work, I guess, available to me. Like I was more, servicing. It was, it's more work for the people that came outside. Yeah, no, nah, it definitely, but. It, I'm still fucked up. No, I'm not gonna lie, bro. I feel like a nigga that went to war that just didn't get shit for that shit, bro. I promise you, bro. I'm like, bro, come on. They we never sat out here, bust our ass. They talking about heroes act. We the heroes act that. Please. Why y'all didn't look out for niggas? The Central Workers Act. Nah, they gave us the title for that joint. The mother was called the Heroes Act. Oh yeah, I'm I'm with it. I'm a hero. Shit, I went yeah, to work they every day. Out, they flat out called me the Avenger. You feel me? I was out here. I was out this motherfucker. I went to work every day. Definitely was out this motherfucker. All right, all right, QAs. Come on, so we can get we can we can cut the tension, man. Let's get this shit out of the way, man. Let's get this shit out of the way, QAs. All right, so uh, what I'll be thinking about is Donald Certified Love Boy. I'm gonna tell you this. Dead ass. I listened to Certified Level Boy from start to finish. It was like what 21 songs? Yeah. From start to finish. It, it dropped, it said it was a 2 a.m. release. It, it dropped like 1 30, 1 45. I was damn on my phone waiting for that. I damn it DM this nigga like, ooh, it's midnight where that shit at. On God, I almost DM the nigga. I promise you, I was gonna tweet him and all that. The fuck is this shit at? I went to Dennis page. That's his dad. I'm going Dennis Brand page. I'm like, 
then it's posted easy at 2 a.m. I ain't had to say nothing. I seen this shit. I'm like, all right, 2 a.m., 1.30, I'm looking for it. Boom, I play the drink. Intro for Drake, always awesome and shit. I'm not going to lie. He, I don't think, I didn't think that he was going to drop and let me down. Bars, Drake had, Drake, Drake got better bars than Kanye West. Okay, like, yeah. bar for bar, he got better bars than Kanye West. Kanye West had a better hip hop album to me though. I'm not gonna lie. When I got when I got received, I listened to the whole album. I've listened to every Drake album since before So Far Gone. I've been listening when this nigga was screaming ATF and and all things fresh and shit. And when when they was first getting started out, and I'm gonna say this shit just was another Drake album, bro. Like Certified Lover Boys, this sound like Certified Lover Boy three. You know what I'm saying or two. You know, it, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like we heard this before. But we, that's what Thug was saying on well, his million dollars worth of game. When you get a Drake level, you can't go. It, it's no going higher. You just got to do something different. You know what I'm saying? And I, I mean, it's a good album, bro. I'm just going to say I appreciate And I, I say this like this. Great album. They use the same players. And on both albums, they damn near had the same feature lineup. They they both use Lil Baby, they both use Lil Dirk, they both use Jay Z, you know what I'm saying? And uh, huh? Oh Kanye, yeah, uh, Kanye ain't get that motherfucking Lil Wayne verse though, because Lil Wayne ate Drake and Rick Ross on that song. Did he? I gotta go back and listen to that. Yeah, I, it, it, it it didn't really it didn't really stand out to me like that when I was. What? I don't know what it was. No, I'm, I'm promise you. Cause it didn't stand out to me, bro. Cause the the song that stood out to me on the whole joint was the first, the intro. What's the joint? Champagne. Um, something. I forget the name of this shit. Poetry. Champagne. That joint and the way too sexy. I ain't gonna lie. Way too, cause I, cause I'm young. I mean, I'm older, so I know the sample. So when I'm hearing like, it, I'm like, this, yeah. I was like, oh, he got the sample clip for this. Bro, I used to like that song growing up. Like, I'm too sexy for this shirt, but. They made it like a song for niggas now. So it was like, oh, yeah, too sexy for this trap. I was like, yeah, I am too sexy for the trap. He's that lying. What the fuck he talking about? I like that shit. That's a mean little workout joke, right? I ain't going to hold you, bro. I, I, I can see that bitch going off in the club and all that. That's going on. I ain't going to lie. I, to that. I haven't listened to a front to back yet, so I can't give my, a true review. I'm waiting on DJ Q Wade's review to see what I'm going to check out and shit. But, um... Yeah. But that little Wayne verse hard, man. This this go because I I heard probably like five six songs off that jump. Who's the hardest feature? Because Lil Wayne versus he, and that's why he ended this song. I ain't gonna lie though. I ain't gonna lie though. That, that joint Jonah. Man. That joint Jonah or Donda though. That should let you know. Like I oh, don't man it. Donda and, and Certified Level Boy was two different moves. Like, uh-huh. like I, I, they wasn't like for me to be like that. It this was a good versus, you know what I'm saying? In my mind, like, damn, that was a good versus right there. Like, it's kind of they close, bro. Like, they, ain't nobody about to say that Drake just shitted on Yay. Drake just did some Drake shit. Yay did well, some Yay shit, but as far as looking like, oh. Now they said they said that Drake Drake broke records yet uh when he dropped though. He did uh, the most the most single day streams of an album it, like on it was on Spotify and Apple Music. Oh well he won. <laughs> yeah. I mean it, well, it, what that's YouTube what I'm saying. Because like, like, YouTube is talk- the number one uh streaming service. But we we talking we talking rings, bro. It's, it's money, bro. It's yeah. money we talking about, bro. Ye did two million before he, we even got. We was geeking for the dream when he got his money already. Oh, I, he made right. millions. They both <laughs> not nah, see. They they both won, but who oh, yeah, won? Nah. Him. I don't know, but they said they said Drizzy just uh, leaked the song with uh, Kanye and Andre three thousand though. So they they still they they, they, still they on shit. I, nah, I think they need. I think they need to keep this alive right now though, because they they the two. It's not that many top rappers. Like everybody be thinking, cause you you know of a rapper that he like a top tier rapper or top tier artist. It, uh, these niggas literally like in the same. Like these niggas 
being in the same room is not like, oh, how the fuck he get here? You know what I'm saying? Like, like what is he doing here? Like, nah, it's y'all two niggas is like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, what, what they call like A list? Like, they A list. Oh yeah, rap they, they, like, they they A plus list. So where yeah, where, Kend- like, where Kendrick at? Because Kendrick was talking a bunch of shit on that I, family ties. Listen, bro. Listen. I, I, hit, I hit. He 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 better slide. He better slide. And I, and I'm talking about he. I, I, I ain't gonna say he better slide. Like I don't he know. Went he went off on that shit though. Yeah. I mean, but. I, I like Kendrick, but you know that you know they he he fucked him up ever since he switched the style up and he started he been he been kung fu Kenny like rapping like real like how he was just rapping on that family ties joint. Yeah, that, that's that. when he really yeah that's when he started fucking niggas up though because then he ain't really he not conscious he not the he don't got that conscious boom bap uh that 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 normal conscious like. You know what a nigga about to be conscious because he coming boom back this shit like dun, 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 you know what I'm saying? Hey, look, you know a nigga wait, coming conscious. He he said it what you asked. He was like, wait, Kendrick, but yeah, he said, I ain't know no gimmicks. Y'all just got on this black live, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, he and said I ain't with no I with no overnight the overnight uh exactly shit. Yeah, I've been doing this. Y'all, y'all think I, I'm not popping up, I'm not trying to show my face for this. I've been on it. This is a life. Yeah, it's a life like quarantine and motherfuckers have been staying, staying alive. Fuck. Exactly. That's what you're supposed to do, though, man. I ain't gonna lie, though. This quarantine, I, I, somebody said, I heard the other day listening to something, something came past my ears. It was like, we living, this is probably like one of the best times to be alive, like to be living, and best time periods to be in. First of all, we got communication, we got technology, you know what I'm saying? Everything a little bit. Everything you would think was, is like kind of the easiest right now. It's, it's I feel like it, it can get easier because people are gonna build shit to make life, I guess, say easier, but it's not gonna really be easier. It's just gonna be you doing less shit. And um this this is a this is an awesome time to be alive, man. Even though it's some crazy ass shit going on, bro. It's an awesome time to be alive. What if whole time COVID came from outer space and they ain't trying to tell us? Nah, that shit was man made, man. They nah, it could, it could be, but nah, nah man made. You, you you know, do you know how some uh? So I want, I want a lot of people don't know that some some diseases are released into the atmosphere, but they oh like they've been around for billions of years, but they've been frozen in certain layers of you know mm-hmm. the the of the world. You know, we we done went through ice ages and all and this, this shit melting. Shit. And when certain, yeah, when certain uh, ice caps and this shit melt off, it released because these people look at germs like they human. They they it's a living organism. They not human. It's a living organism. You know what I'm saying? Like you a living organism. Like you need to feed. You need you multiply. You grow. That's what the fuck. That's what the fuck bacteria do too. It's this. It, it, it's a life form. You know what I'm saying? Except. I don't think that a human can freeze for a thousand years and then thaw out and then be alive, but a, a fucking bacteria can. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I was doing, you know, I be, I, I like, uh, I like outer space, and I be, I kind of be tapped into like prehistoric shit, like dinosaurs and shit. But I'm probably one of the people that, in my mind, I kind of question dinosaurs' existence a little bit. I don't. I'm just this that nigga. I'm that's. That's my that's my that's my new conspiracy theory. I used to be one of them Illuminati niggas. Now I'm a uh, where the bombs now I'm a dinosaur from? nigga. I, where, where the bombs come from? Niggas make movies every day, b. <laughs> niggas nah, make movies same. every I, day, b. So you got to You got. I don't really know if this is a real dinosaur bone, bro. I ain't gonna. I'm going to be real with you. This is me. I ain't, I'm not about to have a conversation. I don't got no pieces on this shit. Another day. Only thing is. I'm just thinking how the fuck, at what point in time were these motherfuckers roaming the world and how come we didn't get it, why we never existed with them? Oh, there's no like human sightings of dinosaurs, no. Cause uh, you want me to really explain it or? <laughs> well, you can explain, shit, we got time. Nah, it's okay. just evolution, it's over time. Human, uh, if, 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 if you, like humans on this earth haven't been here the whole time. We humans, uh, humans as a species is a younger species on the earth. We have, we haven't been here on the earth in, in our current modern human form for a million years. Like so, the earth is some couple billion years old. 
dinosaurs they went extinct 65 million years ago so, so, so god created the earth and just had it on spinning for billions yeah. of years before niggas got here this young just yeah. spinning and operating exactly you know and what that's, though that's that's what the I'm, genius of god that's the genius that's what of god. i'm saying that's, that's exactly the genius what I'm of saying. god though. i'm like i'm like y'all people people when you start talking about god and it was like well god didn't say that i'm like People act like God, like the Bible is telling you all of God's secrets. Nah, yeah, that's nah, the baseline but, but of how makes, to live. It, it makes sense if if the, the dinosaurs' bones being like, I guess, you know, dinosaurs and all this, you know, stuff that came before. That's why we got like what they call fossil fuels and shit. That, yeah. um, I want to say like, I want to say it kind of makes sense that all this stuff got happening because then it be, it's layers, you know, the, the world is built, like, like we were just, like I was just saying, the world is built in layers anyway. So I can see this young spinning for a couple thousand years, a couple thousand years, a couple billion years, and then boom, niggas being popping up and shit. Because I don't, I just be thinking like, how the fuck was niggas, was niggas bigger? Because dinosaurs was big as shit. So was humans bigger back in the day? Yeah, like, so, like if you... Again, I don't really want to be too technical, but if you go study it, like mammals, we're on the mammal branch. We were small at the time. Dinosaurs were large. And the reason mammals don't grow as large is it's, it's, it get complicated, but it's like how our bodies work, how our, uh, how our blood is pumped through the body and we're warm blooded and, you know, the, the thermal regulating all this shit. But again, yeah. Dinosaurs is real. Like I've dug out not a dinosaur bone, but I've dug out fossils of shit that was hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And with humans, we think of a long time as a human lifetime. Like you think of a long time as you like 15 years ago. That was a long time ago. Now nah, we talking 65 million years. So it like it's it's beyond it's beyond a lot of human uh uh comprehension because it's not uh it's not a lifetime it's not a generation it's millions of generations that take to make this happen to take no. a, a, a organism a organism to change from one to another but then like if you rewind technical in it like it's so like back to like in different life forms they reproduce at a faster rate so like it's been experienced conducted that you can actually watch evolution happen. Like, it's, it's a lot of shit, but yeah, dinosaurs is real. They they real. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I still don't know. You go dig up the on your stuff. You do the lesson. You learn. It, it makes sense. I'm just because the they just be doing too much of my shit for some shit that nobody was around to know. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's I think that's what my thing is. Like I be like, young, they be making whole reenactments and videos and shit. Like, how the fuck do they know? But see, that we, a we, we out here looking like that. We 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 got theories, but we don't know for sure. Like just like we don't really know with animals that 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 live in today, everything they do. But we just got theories based. It's like literally theories they inferring off the, the that's the what i'm saying how, how we know they can't breathe on the moon if ain't nobody ever goes to the moon and try to breathe on them well it ain't it ain't no okay the, the, the admin that's that's a little different the, the atmosphere of the moon is so thin that it's no oxygen and you got to be able to pull out the oxygen out there so you if you if you were on the moon and you took your uh space uh helmet off you wouldn't die instantly It'll take a couple of minutes, but you're gonna die. But you're Man. still exposed to the it, you're exposed to the vacuum of space and like it's, it's not, probably cold as shit out there, motherfucker. Yeah, definitely, but like so, like it's like 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 uh, air pressure and all that shit. It, it it seeks equilibrium. So like as a human, you're warm blooded and all of this stuff. So like as soon as you are exposed to the element, like all the heat out of your body is trying to equalize the the cold around you so all right. the heat out of your body leaves to equalize that's just it yeah and then there's no oxygen so you lose oxygen you basically get freeze dry now your little shit will be out there <laughs> huh? be out there. <laughs> hey i seen that joint the martian i finally fucking watched that joint 
I'm thinking to myself, like, they can never, they can never ask me to go out. I'm never going to volunteer myself either to be going out in the space and doing nothing where I got to end up on the planet by myself, potentially, taking care of myself. 20 years, 20 years, you'll be, you'll, you'll take a, uh, have a space flight. It'll be, so? it, it'll be commercial. 20, yeah, you want to get to 20 they years. Gotta, that shit got to be established first, like. I gotta be against this for like a lot of time before I ever say, you know what? I'm finally gonna get on this, uh, this inner orbital flight and shit and go and do this. Like, nah. Yeah, suborbital. It, it, yeah, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be commercial in 20 years or less. Just <laughs> for the convenience and speed and the technology is moving at such a rapid rate. That, yeah, 20 years from now it'll be out for the general public and it's still going to be an expensive first class type of ticket you know what i mean so but in 20 bro, years this shit about to be like star wars out here bro life real life about to be like star wars it ain't about to be like back to the future that shit about to be smack like star wars i'm telling you this shit about to be wicked once niggas start going planet to planet this is imagine you can just have your regular car and just use your regular car or your or shuttle and just go from your house to another planet. That'd be lit. I mean, if if you talking about personal uh spacecraft, that's probably like shit. Uh, probably like uh, it's gonna be like a uh, maybe a uh, hundred years or a thousand years because we don't even have personal flight yet. So personal uh, flight. Yeah. Once personal niggas, flight niggas, happens, they, 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 being a pilot will have to be like a regular thing, just like driving it. It's going to be, it's, it's going to be once, so it's for the next generation. So the next generation, they're going to have self-driving cars. So once you're used to the self-driving car, then you're going to be able to uh, be used to the self-flying car. You know what I mean? It's just steps. You got to introduce shit. Because the technology for the flying cars has been here for like 20 years. Like I can only imagine, I can only imagine how many accidents is gonna be when niggas try and re into the atmosphere. I mean, but no, just think of it. Think of it like a big ass drone. Oh, so it fly in like somebody basically can fly it. Also be guided in. Yeah, right, like it'll, it'll be guided. The the computer. That's what I'm saying. Once the self driving cars and the self prepare once you take away the having to control the vehicle yourself and people get used to that then then because the problem is right now with the self-flying cars is no way to control the security we don't have infrastructure like if everybody had a flying car somebody go and fly a car into the white house you know what i'm saying like because yeah. we don't have enough security to have because to, to go against 10 people trying to go over that gate well, shit, they can actually, that, that can be coded because everything is programming, so they can code. No well, that, that's what I'm saying. So so once once they build the infrastructure where there's no fly zones, where uh, every car that's in this area is going to automatically shut down if it goes over these certain sensitive uh, areas, like, because right now, it's a law saying that there's no drones flown in D.C., but, right. like, people got drones. But it, they don't automatically cut off and shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like about twenty years, about twenty. Cause what? About yeah, twenty forty. It'll be not routine, but it will be available for commercial space uh, space flight. I think they're gonna move the White House one day. Move it where? California. Why? I don't know. I just think I see one day California. That, either gonna to decide to leave the country or they're gonna to decide to be like, you know what, we're gonna leave, we're gonna take care of this. Cause DC ain't got it. I don't know. That's just how I feel. I've been looking, I've been looking at the history of California and Texas, and they be doing what the fuck they want overall. Or they be setting the standard for what the fuck goes on. Like it'd be real loud the California Surgeon General making a lot of calls for everybody. Yeah, DC follow so DC follows the California standard. Whatever mm-hmm. California, uh, uh, it's some shit like whatever their bylaws are, we we so know, was, model our shit after that. I wasn't wrong for even noticing that, and that's crazy because that's just some shit I noticed. That ain't no shit I was told enough, and I just was paying attention. Like that's real. That's real live. Like California, they like it's a whole saying saying California leads the way. 
because a lot mm-hmm. of the policies and shit that are first initiated in California, they normally trickle over the country. But California, yeah, like, they, they but, big on like everything, environmental shit. No, right. like they they be making big rules on they shit like that. Yeah, they they lead the way in there, and DC follows a lot of the cop. I, I somebody explained it to me one day. Like it's like we it's the, uh, their model form. We we inhabit it or inherit that. We 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 decided that's the best one to uh, model ourselves after. So we okay. follow the California roadmap. But California, Alaska, and Texas, to your point, are three states that could operate as independent countries. Also, to oh, some wow. degree, Florida and yeah. New York. But Alaska booming by themselves too. Yeah, they ain't got no choice to be able to booming by themselves. Yeah, because they kind of dipped off. So California, Alaska, and California. California, Alaska, Texas, New York to some extent, and Florida to some extent. Probably, it's probably a couple. Of, it's like it's probably other states that could do it too. Especially, I wonder Florida, if you know? if Alaska feel like America. What you mean? I wonder if it feel like I don't know. The like culture? you know how. Yeah, the culture and the vibe and the feel. Like you know how we you, you can go to different cities here. Like if we go to Philly. We'll fit right in. Like, it'll be like, shit, shit, cool. We go to Atlanta, fit right in. We go to, like, any major city. Even to, like, even the West Coast, to some degree, like, we can just go to major cities, and it's, like, it's, like, kind of almost the same vibe. It'd it be different shit. It might look different, but it still be the same shit. You're going to see it probably crackhead. Well, not, somebody smoking a cigarette, liquor store. Like, it, it's American culture, but not to the same extent. Like, their largest cities... I think are not accessible by road to the rest of the country. So like uh, Anchorage and Juneau, you gotta fly into or come in by boat. So if of course it's not gonna have the same, you know, feel where anybody could just drive in at any time, drive in and out of to the rest of the country. So it's a long I never- area. I never hear no lit stories like nigga like man I was in Alaska this one time and it was this lit ass but I never hear nobody say shit like that. It's a lot of states though that states that that they you don't never hear that shit like I ain't never hear nobody say they went to uh, fucking Wisconsin and just had the time of their life either. I wonder what the fuck be going. Some of these parts of this country probably so behind. This shit probably look like real life. Still look like Little House on the Prairie. Yeah. But when when you take people behind, like as far as what, it's culture. As far as every, yeah, as far as like the culture is just like they be probably here with the technology. Like niggas got the same phones everywhere with them. But then you gotta think only certain shit. Like they only send a certain amount of anything to give any given market. Like they not sending a million iPhones to a small town in in Idaho. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Like, so everybody don't got iPhones with it, is what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, niggas probably still working on flips, and they probably don't even got certain services. There. That's why, that, that that's why it's been such a fight for the, uh, the the cell towers and shit with these phone companies and shit, because they get to take over the smaller companies and extend their network. You know what I'm saying? The, the little backwood companies and shit, they get to extend their network when they go and own them too. And that's how they be, that's how they get to brag about having such great uh, sale coverage. And it ain't like they just be able to cover uh, a certain area just from an antenna. Like, like they own them, them antennas only go but so far. That's how they're able to ping your phone. Your phone bounces around from different antennas all day, depending on where you at. Remember back in the day, they used to have like a roaming feature on the phone, like when your phone was roaming. No, man. Are your brother still on it? Yeah, as long as you still got signal on the network. So even when you roaming, they can find you. That shit. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not understanding why the fuck you can't use your cell phone on the plane. Nah, I think that's more of a just a um for for um 
like communication, you don't want to start getting interference and probably start picking up people's signal and shit, making it make it essential to keep your own shit. Oh man, niggas been going crazy. Hey, niggas been talking about this show called Manifest. I just want to watch the drink, but then again, I don't because if I go in on the plane, I be thinking, what if the people at the airport all want to play a big ass trick on niggas and I get off a plane, they act like that to me. They be acting like, damn, you've been in the air for like three years and everybody acting funny. I'm going to be mad as shit. That'll make me go crazy. I'm going to be sick. Y'all seen the show? Nah. Heard about it, though. Mm. What's going on? Uh, you talking about the show? Nigga, uh, nigga was telling me about the show called Manifest. Nah, I know the show, but I just, what's going on there? So what's happening? On the wall. Nah, I I ain't even started the joint. Nah, nigga, uh, nigga was telling me about it and shit. And I was thinking about it, like what he was telling me, basically like the plot of the story, like the, the whole show and shit. He was telling me the plot. I was thinking to myself, like, damn, I'm gonna go. Ch- I want to go check this joint out. But then I was thinking, like, nah, nigga, I really be catching flights and shit. What is the fuck you land and niggas? Everybody just all of a sudden just acting like it's it's it's, it's another year and shit, acting funny and shit, the clock to move forward with all. Different kind of shit. This is a matter of a few hours, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh hell nah. I'm lose my motherfucking mind. I ain't going like that. But nah, nigga told me he was like, it's some good writing. I like I like shows with good writing. That's why I watch uh anything that 50 Cent executive produced. I'm not gonna lie. I'm watching that shit, bro. I, it's BMS shit that's about to come on. I'm watching that shit. Hey yo, 50 gonna make a billion out of a, a whole new industry. Nah, for, hey, for real, for real. Don't even got to be on the show, though. The nigga don't even got to be on the show. That bitch can say, from executive producer, Curtis 50 Cent Jackson. I'm like, yeah, I'm watching that shit. I ain't, I'm not going to lie to you, bro. That BMF shit, and they yeah. about to come home. Did Big Meech come home? Mm-mm. Not, did. not home yet. Not yet. But he going to come home right around this time that shit coming out. You know what's crazy though is I, the government trying to block certain shit. And, exactly. And like even even them OGs, Larry they who, supposed who? to they po- yeah they supposed to wash up. You know what I'm saying? But they not gonna be able to wash up because so many people from the shit that they started are in position now to help them. You know they are gonna be more than willing. They they want to go down as the nigga that helped that nigga get back on his feet. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like niggas, niggas look up to Big Meech. You think that Big Meech not about to get handled? Hand, I'm talking about niggas like you hear Big Meech talking about in little baby song, and that lets you know, that lets you know that the story that the, the, the what I call the myth or the urban legend of Big Meech is real. You know what I'm saying? When the nigga said, uh, "My teacher asked me what I wanted to be when I grow up," I told her Big Meech. <laughs> I'm hey, like, the yeah. Thing, the thing about them, like. Just like Frank Lucas when he was still living. The thing about them, they didn't get their money. They got them. Nah, for real. They didn't get their money. It was it was money that they got. Yeah, they got. Look, I, they got. I, money. I, I, I ain't about to put no buy on them. I don't know what the fuck they got. Hey, in my book, in my book, they broke. All right, yeah, of, they course, broke of course, of course, until proven, until proven otherwise. Because another nigga. That be running around post incarceration. That be talking about he getting money is a uh, freeway Ricky Ross, and I'm like, is this nigga a snitch or not? Like, what is going on? He with work nigga? with like, him or not? Yeah, he said he was working with the CIA though. That was his con- that was his connect. Yeah, cause they they basically saying that that's who Snowfall was about. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and 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 and. and and then the image that Rick Ross, you know, the rapper was pushing, that's kind of like he tried to embody that. That's that's why he went out to Rick Ross. He's like, damn, this nigga ain't even reach out to me. Like, what the fuck you supposed to say to you? Nigga, I want to use your name. You know what I'm saying? Like, this ain't really your name, nigga. This your nickname, nigga. This anybody. Niggas be having the same nickname all the time. You know how many slims out this motherfucker? Ah. You know how many blacks out this motherfucker? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like they, they try to jive. Like I don't know them old them old heads be trying to make press up on shit certain times. Like 
They want to call Rick Ross like, yeah, this nigga Rick Ross used to be a CO. So the fuck what? So, I see, so the it's, it, it's the thing about him. He lied, you know, when you thought lying about it. Like, oh, he tried to say he wasn't a CO? Yeah. Hey, I wonder, like, how the news get out. Like, nigga probably had a song. They like, Rick Ross. They see the picture. They say, <laughs> like, what? This man, man put me in a hole. It's, <laughs> it's definitely motherfuckers that know him that know, know he was a CEO and it was like, oh, hell no, you a gangster rapper now, you know? But look, he don't really be gangster rapper. He like, in my mind, Rick Ross like the like boss rap. Like, he ain't really, like the shit he be saying, it's, it's, it's mob-esque. Like, it ain't really, it ain't really, you I know mean, what I'm saying? I, like, you, I don't, you, uh, you are. I don't a, really think that he like like I don't. I wouldn't feel like around Rick Ross rapper. like he, he you thug. rap about committing crimes. I I feel like he rapped in the crime realm. Nah, like, well, I'm talking about when he first came out. No, yeah, but I'm yeah, but I'm saying like I I feel like even now to this day like he still uh, talk about certain things that I feel like in my mind I don't think I'm like bro. I, certain niggas, I'm like, he probably a drug dealer. But I'm like, bro, you ain't, I, in my mind, I'm like, bro, you're not dealing drugs. You actually doing exactly what you're saying. You buying wing stops and shit, nigga. Like, now, but he's still, he's still, yeah, Damn. but I don't know. Look. you got to think about when he first came out. Then that's when all the shit came out. Man, look. I never looked at Rick Ross as no gangster rapper to me. Like, gangster rapper to me is like, Little young boys, niggas who I would be in a room with. Like, I wonder if this nigga about to shoot this drone up. Don't make him mad. Don't don't make him mad. <laughs> like for real, certain niggas, I be mean, certain rap niggas. I'm like, I just don't irritate this nigga. I don't feel like I don't feel like it'd be every time. Like, every time I see this nigga on the internet, something happens. Don't make this nigga upset. I mean, it's certain <laughs> people that like they just like in life, you know, that they be what they so they have- to crash out. No, I think that you know a lot of that should be a uh, a lot of that should be. I learned in prison, young, and this this where you get to study people. I learned that that should be a survival tactic, though. Niggas be yeah, trying, exactly. you know, play crazy or keep surround themselves with certain energy or dramas that keep motherfuckers that uh, up off them. Like if you know a nigga, damn, every time you go to this nigga, shut up, motherfucker, get shot up. He never gets shot, but the show gets shot up. I ain't, I ain't like that's what keep me out of certain environments. I ain't even gonna lie. Like growing up, I ain't used to go to and do certain shit if I felt like certain shit was gonna happen. Like I wasn't really necessarily. I don't, I never like was beefing with niggas. I never had beef with it. If a nigga was beefing with me, he was beefing with himself because I didn't. I wasn't beef. You know what I'm saying? Like so, I ain't never like go and be in environments where it's like real turned up and I don't got, I got to have the most control. That's just what I'm saying. Like, if I can't control as much as I can in an environment, I'm not even going. I don't give a fuck. And that, I still be like that now. Like, if a nigga invite me to a party, if you invite me to a party, I'm like, who party is it? You be like, oh, my man got invited from another nigga, from another nigga, from another nigga. Nah, because now I'm a guest. You know, because I'm, I'm not going to that either. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? You, no, you feel me? Like, like I'm like that's too many that relationship, too many cuts. Like you, you need they to be know the who nigga. The fuck I am. You need to know the host, the nigga right. who running this whole shebang. You need to be like this when you go. I'm not really. It ain't no. Oh, this nigga, this nigga, this. At least, at least, it, your girl gotta be friends with the, the host or something. You know what I'm saying? Like that's as far as I'm going. <laughs> hey, look, that's why we vibe together because we're not going to put ourselves in no dumbass situation where you yeah. at odds with some random niggas that you, you know what I'm saying, don't know for no reason type of shit. Like, that's crazy. And, and, and everybody sitting around looking stupid and shit when it's when the, when like, when the motherfuckers say, all right, everybody get the fuck out, I want to know that he's not talking to me and, and you. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, <laughs> he's not talking to us. Like, these motherfuckers get the fuck out. Then we start from square one cause so I can know what's going on. Or at least had an option to say, all right, bro, I'm leaving. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I don't I, I, I've been in too many situations where it wasn't, you know, I wasn't, I, 
in in the best. You're not in the loop. In the best odds. Yeah, I wasn't in the best odds. You know what oh, I'm I saying? Like you. I thought I was, and it wasn't me. It wasn't. I survived it. Yeah, my ass. Well, hell, hey, hell of a hell of a time. I ain't gonna lie. The best ass whooping I ever got, but it was a life lesson. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, man. It's a race since then. See, that's how I, that's how I live my life. If I go through a small thing that I feel like I probably could have lost my life doing, I'm probably going to stop doing it. <laughs> I'm probably going to just be like, you know what? I did this one time. They almost fucking killed me. And, and a lot of the times that be not being on point. You know what I'm saying? Like, I stopped getting drunk at, at parties. That was the thing I had to stop doing because I'm like, when I be busted and out of it, don't nobody be trying to protect me like how I be trying to protect people. You know what I'm saying? Don't nobody be like, oh shit, he not thinking for himself. He busted drunk. He he could fucking possibly have alcohol poison. They just be like, ah ha ha, look at this nigga, he drunk. I'm like, that's fucked up. <laughs> like I could be dying right now. <laughs> so I stopped putting myself in certain situations, but I'm telling you, like, I'd have been I'd have been in parties that that fire shit, and then the nigga that shut the jump down, and we gotta leave. I'm looking like. Damn, nigga, I thought you said you knew this nigga. Oh, no, nah, we went to school together. What the fuck you mean? So, <laughs> y'all don't like each other or so? Why the fuck is we getting hey, I ain't, I, I, we went to school together. We weren't in no classes together. You know what I mean? Yeah, we, ass nigga. We, we, we would see each other at motherfucking in gym class. Every, every motherfucking, nah. when the sections went against each other. Like, I ain't find out that niggas, I ain't, like, growing up, I'm telling you, bro, how how off to myself I was, bro. I didn't realize that niggas knew I existed in the world, so I started getting over the niggas. Like, oh, yeah, man, went to school together. Hey, bro, you used to be this. I'm like, hey, you remember me? Like, I, I wasn't fucking with you. Like, I be in my head, I wasn't fucking with you like that. Like, I ain't even think you fucking with me, fool. No funny. Like, they was like, oh, no, we had class together, bro. You used to be in that job. Remember? I'm like, oh, damn. That's all right. <laughs> They're good. I'm telling you, man. Niggas to tell same shit, bro. Same shit. That shit be funny yeah, I, though. I make mean, this. I just be thinking to myself, like, well, if you would have showed this kind of love and support back then, I probably would have had a better re- relationship with you, my nigga. Like, I, I didn't think you knew I existed. Like, you wasn't conscious when we was twelve. The fuck, nigga was mean as shit. Hey, yeah, some niggas, some niggas though. I ain't gonna lie, yeah. You ever? You ever seen a nigga, young man? Cause I, I'm gonna be real, but you can say no. But it happened to me. You ever seen a nigga that whooped your ass growing up? <laughs> and like as an adult, it'd be like, <laughs> we beat again. <laughs> I, I, we beat again. You can and, say I'm. I I would I would want to agree with you, but <laughs> hey, listen, listen. I think I'm, I'm, I'm growing this shit, young. Nah, yeah. But I was like, but I'm talking about my elementary years. Like, niggas still look the same. And I, I realized that growing up. So, see, nigga, I'm like, okay. But see, I, oh, 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 he, he fat now, too. But see, my thing, I'm, I'm, I'm different. You know, I got big brothers and shit. You know what I mean? So. Oh, no, nah, I have the big brother. So, you know me, I got, I'm, I'm the one that got set the standard for getting even yeah, on niggas. I never, I, like I never took no ass whippings, you know what I mean? I got I got and I got one that's right in the grade right before me and I got one that's uh four years older, you know what I mean? So Hey fool. <laughs> I got my ass I got my ass whooped after school one time, right? Niggas <laughs> jumped me, right? Uh with no ass reason. I thought these niggas was my men, right? This one I don't trust niggas. So these niggas was my friends. They whooped my ass, right? Like my mother ain't let me go to school because she was annoyed and she ain't really know how to handle the situation. My father knew how to handle the situation, but my mother ain't really want to let him. So he's like, man, let that nigga go back to school. So I go back to school. My father telling me, like, listen, go on that motherfucker. Yeah, they jump you. So what? If anybody puts you in the situation, you work your way out that motherfucker. You ain't in trouble. I said, you sure? He said, I promise you ain't in trouble. Work your way out there, motherfucker. Straight like that. Wherever they at, if they if they catch you in the bathroom, you about to use the bathroom, work them. I was like, you sure? He was like, yeah. I was like, all right. Like that was my that was my cue. Like, all right, I'm gonna work your dumb ass now. Dad told me I can whoop you. Fuck it. So 
motherfucking one day I get out of school, and I'm like, in my head, this is the first day back. I'm like, today, today, they're gonna try to test me. You feel me? Like, niggas gonna be like, damn, this nigga ain't we whooped his ass. He ain't come to school for a couple of days. My mother had me looking weak. I'm like, that's what my father trying to get me back from. He's like, you gotta get back from that. You feel me? I'm like, all right, fuck this. I'm not trying to look like no sucker in school. Man, I get out of school, I see my dad with a car full of niggas, you hear me? He looked at me, he gave me a head nod. I was like, I'm right here, it's like tight shit. Like, anything happen, I'm right here with you. So if they try to jump you again, it ain't gonna go like that, but fight them, you know what I'm He like, uh, he like, fight them, you know what I'm saying? Hey, fool, I'm gonna tell you this now. I, I had to fight all them niggas, bro. <laughs> I had to fight all the niggas. My father died, had made me fight every nigga, bro. You guys, after like the first nigga I had to fight, bro, the other niggas was just like, oh, no, nah, we ain't need to do nothing. We ain't need to do nothing. He's like, y'all don't want to fight him? He's like, nah. And I'm looking at my father like, this nigga got to be out of this fucking mind. I had to fight about down there six niggas, bro. I'm like, this nigga, this nigga got to be out of this fucking mind, bro. I don't know who the fuck he thought I was, bro. I ain't going to hold you, though, bro. That, that shit right there told me, though, because like, I'm the oldest child, so ain't nobody really was there but my dad to tell me what the fuck I had to do. It be hard as shit out here to decipher when you gotta be valid. You know what I'm saying? Cause like, <laughs> I think that that's why a lot of us die too. Cause niggas don't know when to defend themselves. And not saying that the other person gotta necessarily die, but certain people die cause they don't even, I be thinking sometimes that the wrong, well, people die cause they supposed to, but it, it's hard to decide when you're supposed to be violent out this motherfucker and take care of yourself. Like, my, some motherfuckers rather just be the victim of the situation than defend themselves. And that used to be me. Now, I'm a predator. But I'm a silent predator. I just be in the back cool and like, I attack when it's, when it's, when I'm supposed to. I just attack opportunities. Yeah. But yeah, niggas that whooped my ass, bro, and I had seen them growing up, though. You know, the more of that story is, right? I had seen him growing up. I had to tell one nigga on that food. Like, you don't remember me, bro? He's like, well, I told this nigga his name. He was looking at me like, how you know me? I told him how. I was like, he's like, damn, you remember that? I was like, yeah. <laughs> What's up, bro? <laughs> how you doing? He's <laughs> like, bro, y'all job with my ass, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. That was the last time a nigga ever got up on me like that. But I never let niggas jump me again, bro. It was one time in my life. I was like, man. From here on out, <laughs> my father had to tell me nothing. I'm like, from here on out, I'm blasting niggas. Fuck it. I'm dealing with niggas. I got kicked out of school and some more shit, bro. Hey, we Man, got, I'm not going like that. We definitely hmm? had to fight, we, we, you know, but like I said, I just had bigger brothers and cousins and all of that shit. So they nah, kind I'm, of, I'm the oldest. They kind of, nah, but so it's different though, you know what I'm saying? Cause like I think motherfuckers that made me feel bad, that teased me and shit, talked about me and joned on me and stuff like they that. They be fat. They be fat. They yeah, be but fat. I'm saying, they don't like, even... so I, I, I understand the sentiment, not to the extent where I, physical harm was caused to me, but like motherfuckers that made me feel bad, definitely motherfucker teased me or tried to bully me in that way. You know what I mean? You see him now, you be like, oh, you fucked up and look at me now. You know what I'm saying? So I feel that. But nah, I, I, be we, saying, I, be, I be saying I'm niggas like, up. I don't can I think <laughs> that niggas really, I would have never really, it was only that one year in sixth grade that that really happened. Other than that, I, don't, I can't really say, I can't really say I was in, in, in school environments and niggas was joining because I was always on the, I just like was on the forefront on that Jonas in the school, bro. Oh, I ain't gonna lie, I just like, see it, it, again. It was when I was, I was kind of young, you know, before I learned all that shit. I was like, but I still remember that though. Like, if mm-hmm. you tease me in the second grade, third grade, no, I was still nice. I was still like a nice guy. Then. Yeah, I was still on the nice spectrum. Like, I was still trying to be cool with the teacher and shit. Second grade. I started rebelling around like fourth grade. That's when I started. I started getting involved in the shenanigans in class. I'm I'm coming to school like, yeah, you got to make sure your pants iron, make sure your shit cuffed, shoes clean, shirt clean. Oh, it's not faded. You know what I'm saying? Like, he not about to fire me up in this young today. School used to be cool as shit for me. I ain't going to lie though. As, as fucked up as, as, as that shit actually was, when you talk about it now, ain't no telling how many motherfuckers you would go home feeling bad because I was joining them. That's crazy. 
See, if y'all see this podcast, my fault. I wasn't being a dick. I was just being funny. I apologize. We can be friends. I promise. I mean, <laughs> <Just> well, like... <laughs> I, I feel you the same way because it's like if you like that taught me though, like being teased and not being ready. That taught me like so now I can defend myself with my words, with my deeds, with my actions. You know what I'm saying? I, I can defend myself on all fronts now. You know what I mean? Like that taught me that like you got oh man man I be hearing I I I let people know that I was like look don't join on me I won't join on you especially now with in my life you know what I mean like the you know the things I've accomplished and shit like, and niggas like, start joining on me now <laughs> that I'm thirty bro I ain't gonna lie bro. <laughs> If a nigga stop like this, I, I ain't gonna lie. It, it, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let the nigga say everything he's saying, cause you know the niggas gonna have to laugh. Who get the cover? Right. Laughing like shit, and I'm be like, bro, I punch you in your shit, bro. I'm gonna tell him straight <laughs> like I punch you in your shit, bro. I mean, flat out. If I'm gonna no punch you, in it. if I'm gonna punch you, I'm gonna punch you. <laughs> I'm not nah, no, nah, that's just the look I'm gonna get a nigga like that. Just look like I'm gonna punch you. You know that look like I'm gonna punch you. Your shit. I'm gonna knock you the fuck out. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm be looking like <laughs> this, when you get that blank look like that, you know a nigga about to steal your ass. You be like. You know, that, that's what I, I'm shit. just saying. I, I, I could teach a motherfucker how to drone now, but I had to learn how to defend myself because my only was there. teasing me. Hey, so look, I had a talk with my daughter last week, right? Um, and this this, this this some big shit, right? Cause like my old like for me, I got kids, but like my oldest kid happened to be a girl, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like I know I remember first having her, thinking like, what the fuck I'm gonna teach a girl, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I got to a point in my life where I realized I gotta teach a girl the same shit I gotta teach a boy, you know what, yeah. what I'm saying? So uh, the other day I was talking to her, she had got in trouble for something. And I don't, I don't beat her unless she, if she need to get hit. She, on, she had the age, she about to be 10. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, she passed the age where I got to touch her to get her to understand what I'm saying. Like, I don't, I, I don't feel the need to hit her because that's not the lesson that's to be taught in this world moving forward because you can go on moving forward from 10 to the rest of your life without me. You know what I'm saying? I can get incarcerated. I can get killed, you know what I'm saying? And well, I can die, you know what I'm saying? And you can um <clears throat> you're gonna have to go in and have, you know, a certain criteria for your life. Basically, I told her, like, you gotta have a code, you know what I'm saying? And the first rule that everybody code needs to be respect. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's the first rule that anybody code, the first point, number, whatever that you're using to decide what your code is, if it's not respect. Then, then your code is out of whack already. Because res, res, respect got to go. You respect. And I told her, I said, you respect yourself first. When, all of this stuff is to you first. You know what I'm saying? Because when you do it right within yourself and according to yourself, and you treat yourself a certain type of way, it's going to determine how you deal with everything else that's around you and how you get to decide who you deal with and how you deal with people. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, if you you got to have respect. And I'm like, after respect, you know what I'm saying? You get to decide what it is. If, if you want it to be loyalty, if you want it to be honesty, I mean, uh, honor, because it has to be these things. You, your code has to consist of these things that I'm mentioning, regardless. In whatever order you're going to put them in, but respect got to come first, right? So we sit and had this conversation. <clears throat> And I'm sitting here thinking, I, like, as I'm talking to her, I'm thinking to myself, like, damn. Like, I ain't going to say that my dad didn't really, he ain't never sit me down like this, but I just felt like as the shortcut to a lot of bullshit, because these kids, like, so caught up in seeing, being raised by some other shit that you got to literally sit there and tell them direct shit, because Cardi B is directly telling her to shake her ass for some cash. You know what I'm saying? So with Cardi B saying that, whether you look at it like, oh, that's a metaphor, they don't understand that. Why do you think, what do you think we learn about metaphors, similes, rhymes and shit in school? Where, you, where the fuck is they at all day? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and so like, 
I had to, I had to really like, cause like I'm at this point where I'm adjusting, like she about to be a teenager and it's like, I have to build this relationship, a trust with her to where she can feel like, all right, dad, it, dad is coaching me. He not even on no shit. Like he really just coaching me to the, to the championship. It's like, I told her, like I had a real conversation where I had to, I apologize to her for some shit. Cause when I, when she, when I had to talk to her about shit that she's doing wrong, I have to, I also put myself in, in, in a hot seat to some regard and take ownership for something. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want her to feel like I'm putting her down. So right. I'd be like, you know, see, I, and so I tell her like, you know, I apologize to you. I apologize to you because I brought you into this world. I helped create you into, in this world and bring you here and you were in poverty. You know what I'm saying? You were born in a poverty. You don't have a rich mother. You don't have a rich father. You don't come from a lineage of rich people, wealthy people. So we at a point right now, like I'm getting her up to date to where you, where you in the game at. Like we at the point right now where daddy is fighting you out of poverty right now by fighting himself out of poverty. Now you can even sit back and watch and, and, and go on autopilot for the next two years and have to just deal with whatever the cars you like deal you, or you can deal with these cars that daddy already got on the table for you and take it from there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got a credit score that's that's decent, you feel me? In four years, she gonna be, you know, attached to that. So her shit gonna be decent. You feel what I'm saying? Like, we already got, I'm already coming up with plays for you. And I let her know everything. I'm like, I'm coming up with these plays for you right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you need $20 right now, I need $20. But in the future, the stuff that I'm doing right now, you gonna thank me for, trust me. <laughs> I was like, you're gonna thank me for it, but you need to you need to be thanking in the here and now. And with that being said, you're not no kid. So you need to be holding yourself responsible. Like every time something happened, you don't need to be sitting up here and telling me, well, this person did da 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 da. First of all, that's snitching, but thank you for telling me the truth. But well, what did you do? Says you want to be a snitch, what the fuck did you do, snitch? You know what I'm saying? Like flat out. That's how that's how I administer punishments and all that shit if one person rat first of all the rat you get in trouble too i don't give a fuck i don't give a fuck <laughs> i don't give a fuck you know what i'm saying like i don't give a fuck because you know when you need to be telling certain shit you don't need to be telling about especially when you was in on the shit oh hell no nah. like little kids i don't like that shit they be trying acted one one body and then when they deal with you acted another I'm like uh -uh. I wasn't allowed to do that with my dad my father I'd be acting one way he would look me in my face and be like nah what you did was da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da, da -da -da. like some of the details would be off but I'd be like I did that shit you know what I'm mean? saying? <laughs> I did. I did that. I did that. You know, I mean? but but the time that he would do that, <clears throat> he wouldn't hit me. He wouldn't beat me. Like when I lie to him <clears throat> and stand on my lie, he gonna he he just like all right, you want like basically like don't make that our relationship. Don't make that our relationship where you lie to me. Cause look, nigga ain't nothing new under the sun. You know what I'm saying? Like. The cell phone's getting new, the Jordan colorway's changing, but ain't nothing really different. You know what I'm saying? Basically, like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, Soldier Boy always gonna be the first nigga to do something. That's not gonna change. Like, Soldier Boy, the first nigga to diss Kanye. Like, <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah, that nigga Kirk on Yeezy, bro. This nigga, man, I don't know. I, I don't know why. Hey, oh, man. Hey, how much time we've we, we been on here? I got like three, I got like three topics, young, I had to talk about this week, young. The first thing is, what y'all think about, about, uh, what y'all think about, um, the fucking, they said Drake, R. Kelly got a fucking, uh, a writer credit on Certified Love Again. Ooh, I mean, he, it's a sample. He, yeah, he, and, yeah, and it's he a had to good, get it clear. It was like, well, he could have chose not to use it. But I'm like, when it come down to what a nigga is trying to accomplish, I'm going to say this. I, I, I had a conversation with somebody, 
and, and about certain people, like actually just like just gauging the kind of person. Like you like Tory Lanez? Nah, I'm fucking with Tory Lanez since da 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 da. You you uh. So I'm thinking like, okay, so R. Kelly, I have a question if you would listen to his music. And I'm like, how about Chris Brown? I don't really listen to Chris Brown that much, but R. Kelly music I'm like, good. <laughs> Bruh, listen. That shit's so good. I don't be, I don't go and stream the shit. All right, so look, I don't go and stream his he shit. <laughs> but if the shit like, I mean, it don't come on the radio no more either. So I can't say if it come on, I'm gonna just listen to it. But like, Man. if I happen to, <laughs> If I happen to play an R. Kelly song on my phone okay. or some shit, bro, because like, you know he basically shadow banned on the internet, like as far as streaming services, you like, can't it play. I believe much. I'm a fly. Liberal. That, that shit is so inspirational. <laughs> First of all, it's not even that. One of my favorite R. Kelly songs is uh, the "Step in the Day with Love." Oh, I, I love them shit. Oh, look, so I was just at a cookout. That's why I'm laughing. I was playing Happy People. That shit is Let's beautiful. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Happy people. Oh, my that shit is them. beautiful. Listen, listen. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. That nigga is a fucking sick individual. But um, this is the music that I was hearing growing up. So if this is the shit that he was doing as I was growing up, y'all should have stopped him. Y'all should have stopped that shit from being on the airways because this nigga cosign and this, this nigga is a is a big part of a lot of niggas' careers. You know what I'm saying? Like they releasing, they were they it is it, it, it's, it's it's to me it's ironic that they upset about stuff that's being revealed about this nigga. Like it probably wasn't already information that was out in the world, but also they released um, Aaliyah's music to a lot of her music, they releasing it to streaming platforms. Mm -hmm. And with that that's being said, you know, R. he was writing this shit, bro. Like, so I, he not eating? What you think he not eating? You he, can't ban he R. Can't Kelly. Even, he can't even sell his masters because don't right. nobody want to own them. But but honestly, honestly, uh, honestly, <laughs> when us moving forward into this new era, if if if, if, if somebody was to say go and secretly own his me, masters and then in that let me get my host, brain up. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like I'm just saying, like niggas playing. Hey, look, so hey, we going that. We're gonna donate twenty five percent of all all R. Kelly's music to the victims' relief. Yeah, we're gonna take his shit. We're gonna take his shit. All that good ass music. Then how we gonna take this shit for it? Yeah, so niggas don't feel guilty for listening to some of the songs that they like. Cause I'm sorry, but listen, if Make It Rain remix come on, I make it rain. Hey Cassidy, I make it rain. Hey Cassidy, I'm... if you ever see the podcast and and fucking hotel come on, fool, you ain't gotta feel bad when these niggas be trying to diss you and bring that R. Kelly shit up, my nigga. That was a song that as a child, when you did that song with R. Kelly, you was a hero to me, my nigga. Y'all was looking sweet in my mind. You feel me? I was like, this is cool. You feel what me? You like, know, Jeff. Yeah, that man, that was a cool. That nigga said, you can meet me at the boat, sail on the boat, sail on the holiday, and say, what? <laughs> that nigga was fucking him up. Fuck you, me. Cassidy was like that back in the day. I ain't know what was going on in the industry. I ain't know this nigga, this nigga was a battle rap nigga. I just thought he was here as a rap. I was like, hey, what's up? That nigga was on fucked, TV, shit. Fuck three way up. Hey, he spanked three way ass. Hey, put a beat thing, on, like, man. Put a beat on. Another, another, uh, my, 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 one of my other topics. Uh, I usually don't be speaking on this shit, but I'm gonna say what the fuck I gotta say about this shit because I got kids. So, Lord Nas X, man, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna speak. I'm speaking on, on behalf of me and nobody else, just myself. As far as what he is trying to accomplish, it's like, okay, you homosexual, cool. Stop forcing the issue because he think he makes he made a tweet. Someone made a tweet 
And then he responds to the tweet, like, niggas don't want to work with him, Nick. Kid Cuddy, like, shit, nigga, I'll work with you. You know what I'm saying? And Cuddy doing this out of this sense of, like, fearlessness and, and you know, creativity. But Cuddy, you always been weird anyway. Not that I don't like Kid Cuddy or nothing. I'm just saying you always been weird anyway. So that's not, that's not like, oh, shit, Kid Cuddy working with Lil Nas X. That's not, like, far-fetched. You know what I'm saying? But... It's more so like how you how he he going he like look at me look at me look at what I want to do with it you know what I'm saying and it's like when, remember when when Frank Ocean what we talk about when Frank Ocean came out with this shit and it's like Frank Ocean was still after that happened Frank Ocean still ended up on Watch the Throne you know what I'm saying yeah like he's like after Frank Ocean had came out of the closet and like hey I'm a homosexual. Mm-hmm. I, I only was like, damn. So that song that that you was that was about, damn, that's fucked up because I was fucking with the song. We were talking about it before, and then that's I not, was like, uh, my like, god, damn, man. yeah. Then, but then he still ended up being on a on Watch the Throne. You know what I'm saying? So you sitting up here, you rubbing elbows with Jay, Gay, Beyonce, like you here, you know? And it's not like he came and he was just forcing the shit, like. Look at me, like now all of a sudden I want a pair of breasts, or I want to I want to dress up like a like a pregnant woman. You know what I'm saying? And, and do shit. I'm like, bro, you gotta stop this shit. I mean, like people, he, people. He, he man, that, what's his name? He's just like uh, he like Takashi, man. If I, cause I don't know, I'm not sure about the music quality, but. And from what I'm, cause this, I don't this care. this looking real sell your soul to me. But that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like if, if the music, if the music, cause Old Town Road, that shit slap. So is he still putting out shit like that or what? Cause I don't know. I thought listening after the all the when you start seeing the tirades, it's like okay. Like when they came out, I was like oh he gay. I'm like oh okay. That's all I said was okay. Then after that, all the shenanigans started. And I'm like, right. That's why right, I think right. he liked Takashi. He liked Takashi. So if you if just like Takashi, if you want to get rid of him, don't pay him no attention because the music don't hold up. So if that's why I say if the music's still good, you know what? That Panini shit, that was my shit though. Listen, bro. That Panini shit was my shit. This nigga, the, I, I, just, I just, I just, I just ain't with it because my kids, so you know, this gonna, this gonna go down on record, and my kids might want to know what I thought about a lot of shit when it comes to shit in the future, or they might, I might have to prove to them that I stood on certain shit for a while, so I gotta say this shit now while I can document it. Uh huh. That shit, I that don't force feed me shit because I don't force feed my heterosexual lifestyle on people. Like I don't do that. I don't force feed. With, with how I really feel like that sometimes in my mind that I feel like I should be like Austin Powers. Hey, like I don't I don't force feed that shit to nobody. You know what I'm saying? I'm not walking around. You, you don't see me living a life like that, trying to just pushing my, my street lifestyle on people. So just kind of chill. You know what I'm saying? Like when we say to each his own, we mean just do you. Just do you yeah you yeah know that, I feel I feel you but that's why again like I said I I stopped listening to this shit after Panini because it, it became like Takashi doing gimmicks more than music. The nah, music I, the music I feel like that's track. everywhere like I feel like it's everywhere just to the point where it's like it's almost to the point where it's like it don't feel safe to have to speak to speak as a heterosexual male it's like you can't really say nothing I can't. Look, I'm not well, homophobic. Well, I don't give a fuck. You yeah, do, that's what you not, no, I'm saying. Like, but it, I it, give they just fuck. It just say that, it, like, with cancel culture and shit, it make it seem like you can't even say nothing without a motherfucker. Like, oh, he think this, that, and the third. Like, he this is the type of person that he is. We don't want to fuck with him no more. Like, hey, niggas can't cancel me though. That niggas can't cancel the real though. That's why they try to cancel the baby. Nigga ain't going nowhere. <laughs> nigga not going nowhere. That nigga ain't going nowhere, young. The baby nah, the gonna baby be right here to stay. The little kids love that nigga, bro. Little kids ain't hearing that shit y'all talking about. I mean, it's like <laughs> everybody's so sensitive now. Like, 
it's straight people get a HIV and AIDS, man. Like, like it's certain, it's certain stigmas, and I understand, but like it's certain stigmas. If you don't wear them, you don't own them. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like I I don't I I'm a black person. I don't wear that ignorant black person stigma. I don't feel like I have to be ignorant. You know what I mean? Like I don't own that. That shit miss me if they talk about that. That I don't get offended. I'm like, well, I know you're not referring to me, and I know you don't know uh, black people because if you think black people are ignorant, I don't wear that stigma. Stigma. You feel me? I mean. I, Cause I ain't gonna lie, cause I'm the type of person that walk around. And I think everybody ignorant anyway, so exactly. Cause I be thinking, don't know, don't nobody know because don't nobody, cause everybody always trying to figure out. That's why you don't know, cause you sit around instead of you just meeting the motherfucker or just being courteous and being uh, humane, motherfucker. You trying to oh, judge a person in the first five seconds or point right. five seconds because you meeting them, you like, oh, he's a good person, like, cause. A motherfucker see you with some dirty ass shoes on and your work clothes and automatically think, oh, this nigga's a bum. Not thinking, no, this nigga at work, he on the clock. You know what I'm saying? Like, they'll see you by the hole of the door for me. Oh, I don't have no change. <laughs> the fuck? Nigga ain't nobody asking for no motherfucking change. Not that this happened to me or nothing like that. I'm just saying, that's I, how I was about to say, bro, did that happen? <laughs> no, that don't, happen. that don't happen to me. I, I always look like a, First of all, I always look like I'm going to work. Every time I go outside, I, I look like I'm about to go to work. You should be working. Fuck. Yeah, like, yeah I'm always looking like I'm about to go to work. I don't, I don't, money, when you money. see me, when you see me, I'm going to waste some money, man. What you about to do? Go get exactly. some bread? I'm thinking I'm a massive fun. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, nah, for real. Every, every time you see me, I'm thinking of a massive plan. Hey, but to answer y'all question, though, um, I bullshitted around it, though, about uh, Drake and Yay. <sighs> I just say I, I just go back and spend Kanye. You know, I've been spending his shit a little more. I I, I listened to Drake shit one time. I listened to Yay shit like a couple times. Donda, 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 yeah. Donda, 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 and, Donda, Donda. And, and, and Kanye West, I ain't gonna lie, like he just like put me on more of the West Side Gun too. But now I'm listening to West Side Gun a little bit too. I'm just liking that shit. Whoa, 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 whoa! You wasn't listening to West Side Gun. Now I remember y'all niggas just got put me on the Brazil. Remember we did the interview with bro. He was like, you were like Larry June. So then I started listening to Larry June and shit. Started listening to all this other Brazil and shit. Now I'm just like, damn, this shit is all right. Yeah. <laughs> that old school, right. old head shit. Yeah, but but it's but it's new, but it's new though. Like, it ain't like, new, man. Out. Y'all niggas no, 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 no. No, I'm saying, but it's new, like it's current rap though. It's like about yeah. current. Oh shit. yeah, yeah. They talking about Balenciagas and shit. Mm-hmm. Nigga say uh, Hitler wears Hermes. Yeah, H and H and uh, H and S three, H and H three or whatever. That's yeah. the Benny the Butcher get on uh uh, Conway the Machine. Like I'm down, like. I'm trying to like was vibing out to this shit. I'm like, oh yeah, this shit, you know. Motherfucking um, what was his other jump? Pray for Paris. Um, that's what. That's the kind of albums I be wanting to hit. That's why when I say I hit Drake shit, I just like was like blah. And the reason when I hit Kanye shit, cause it's like, at least Kanye with all. I mean, like I feel like, I feel it's like Kanye, art. Kanye, yeah, Kanye finessed it because of the art. Like this beat. You gonna get on the song, you gonna get on the song, I'm gonna get on here. Like, you know what I'm saying? And do this, like, um, I like, I like that. I like, I like, cause I feel like that's how I be. If I go in the studio with a group of niggas, like, I can go in the studio with us three right here. And Q might not be like the best of rappers, but I'm like, you know what, Q, I do want you on this song. So I hit his flow and be like, all right, so look, say something like this, say this, like this, like this, like this. And keep it short, something that he can swag out, get confident with saying, deliver it, and then and we'll go from there. And I feel like that shit, that's the kind of shit that Ye can do. Like, if you look at the kind of niggas he was on a song with, bruh, I listened to Fabio Foreign, right? Before, like, I heard, like, some of his music. I ain't gonna say I always go and listen to him. When I heard him on Donda, bruh, I just, like, want, 
I need to hear I, probably Bobby on I'm, porn. I, how many songs I, on Donda? Uh, like twenty something. Twenty seven. Yeah. And how many on Drake? Twenty one. Twenty one. Drake did twenty one songs. God dang. But well, listen. Donda was supposed to be shorter, but remember he added the songs from the baby, so he added part twos to a lot of shit. Basically, like then they put out a deluxe off the rip. That shit is art, man. That's it. You, you gotta think of how many songs that didn't get put on the joint that if he do release, he could probably release a whole nother album as a deluxe. I, you know, does no, Kanye don't do the deluxe? Kanye do like the director's cut. Yeah, nah, Kanye West will fucking do a visual album. The fucking Runaway, it was what one of them shits is like an hour long. Runaway yeah, yeah. Love yeah. or some shit. Yeah. It's like an hour long. Yeah. This nigga think outside the box, bro. He waits. He he MC, though. He's the best MC. <laughs> He's the best, the best bro. MC. Kanye the best. make the people feel the most. Kanye, uh, Kanye make people, yeah, he make people go through emotions. He do make, he do make Kanye people. Kanye fucking make you cry. We go to Kanye concert. DMX now, DMX, man. DMX, if you want the heart, DMX say that prayer and then go into his rap. He had a whole, he said he had the whole stadium crying. 20,000 people, everybody boo -hoing. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I probably, I probably read that crime too. Yeah, DMX. I don't know. know that shit, and then went into the rap. I don't the know. Hey, the really listen. All right, so listen. By comparison, though, no cuss words on Donda. Really? So, no, nah, there's no cuss words. No. Not one cuss word on Donda. They don't even say nigga on the jump. Mm, it's all right. Hey, right. I'm talking about he got Polo G snapping, not cursing, and I still like I'm I'm not even it's not even you, you ever listen to the clean version of a song and be like I don't like this jump. I didn't even feel like I was listening to a clean version of a song. Yeah, because you don't have to curse the rap, especially yeah, no. but even when they get to the point where you know they about to curse, it's like I actually like it as a tool to not want to curse anymore. Because when you get to the curse, you be like, because that's how it is. But it don't sound, for some reason, it, it, it like, because I just listened to it. It wasn't even like, it was no other option to have an explicit version. So this is what you get. You know what I'm saying? So I listened to it. I'm like, finished product, good production, good, you know, choices of niggas to put on songs together. Like, I like I, this, you know what I'm saying? I haven't listened to either. Oh, I said that already. I haven't listened to either of the whole album. I want to listen to both of them back to back. I'm probably going to do that over this weekend. Yeah, it takes some time to grab out. Oh, you know, I'm, hey, look, I'm about to, look. My girl off, I'm off. We about to motherfucker listen to this album, you know what I'm saying? We about to make some shit happen. We got uh, a babysitter. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah, nigga, nigga try, nigga try, yeah, have a weekend. You about to listen to this motherfucker album? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, oh, but um, hey, I definitely appreciate y'all time this week, man. Of course, as usual, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you win in my book, you know what I'm saying. Drake, Drake, Drake win. Drake had the melodies, but like Drake, my brilliant. Yeah, he got, yeah, he got some songs in that motherfucker, man. I'm telling you, that's gonna be. Drake, whatever, Drake, bro, you gonna listen to, bro. Drake won first day. Who gonna she win first day? got it on remote control. Only reason I'm gonna say <laughs> I don't like listen, Drake shit, Drake Joe that he did with 21 Savage. Everybody can say, oh, that Joe, yeah, he did it. That wasn't a good song to me. I, I heard them do a better, because like together on a song, I heard them do better than they did on that song. Man, you like, listen, I, listen that, to that's, my, that's my least, that's my least favorite. Drake 21 Savage song. Got you. Ever. Listen to, listen to Lil <laughs> Wayne verse again. I'm about to go listen to that shit. Listen to Lil Wayne verse again. Yeah, top five verse for the year. Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne, 
<laughs> Weezy's a goat though, nigga. Lil Wayne, that's what I say. Guy. I say Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne, hey, Lil Wayne was like, no, no, I'm too cheap. No, I'm too cheap. I'm too. <laughs> that's me. That's me. Listen to that shit. I, I had to. I played that shit back twice. I said, hold up, okay. I got. I, I got to take some time to listen to these albums. <laughs> I'm about to. Yeah, I'm about to go listen to this shit right now. Yeah, he go off on that jump. I'm going to hit right now. Yeah, but I appreciate y'all, man. This is another successful episode, man. Another one for the book. The decent combo, too. Uh, we go right. back. Hope everybody can learn something. You know what I'm saying? Until next time. Yo.